Okay, in this video I'm going to do um, Simpson's Rule and talk about the error bound on Simpson's Rule. And what this says is, it says, um, it says if you look at the fourth derivative of the function, and it says we can bound that above by some number k for um, x, or for x is in our given interval that we're integrating over. Um, it says then we can say that the um, the error involved in using Simpson's rule, the absolute value of that is going to be bounded above by that value k, the length of the interval raised to the fifth power, um, divided by 180 over n to the fourth, where n is the number of intervals that we use. So in this problem, um, we want to know how large should n be. So how many how many intervals do we need to use so that when we approximate from 0 to 1 of e to the x squared, we want to make sure that's accurate to within um, 0. 0.00001. Okay, the first thing we would have to do is to compute the fourth derivative um, of this function e to the x squared. So this is going to be a pretty tedious little problem. Okay. So the first derivative, we would get e to the x squared, and then we would have to multiply that by 2x, or equivalently, uh, we'll get 2x e to the x squared. So when I take my second derivative of this, we'll have to use the product rule. So the derivative of 2x will just be 2. We'll leave the e to the x squared part alone, plus leave the 2x alone. Again, when we take the derivative, we'll pick up another 2x e to the x squared or equivalently we'll have 2 e to the x squared um, plus 4 x squared e to the x squared. So I'm going to erase my problem here to give myself some more room. Okay, so again we're computing this third derivative um, now. So it says the third derivative evaluated at x Okay, from the first part, if we take the derivative of the 2e to the x squared, um, again we'll get 2, and then the derivative of e to the x squared will be 2x e to the x squared. We'll have to use the product rule on the other part, so the derivative of 4x squared will be 8x, we'll leave the e to the x squared alone, plus leave the 4x squared alone, again we'll get a 2x e to the x squared. <coughs> Let's simplify this down a little bit. It looks like we get 4x e to the x squared um, plus 8x e to the x squared, and then it looks like we have 8x cubed e to the x squared. So we can clean this up and make this 12x e to the x squared, combining our first two terms, and then again we have 8x to the third e x squared. So we've got to take one more derivative. Okay, so it says the fourth derivative evaluated at x. Okay, so again we'll use the product rule on both pieces. So we'll have 12, um, we'll leave the e to the x squared alone, plus 12x, and then we'll get a 2x e to the x squared. So that's taking the derivative of the first part of this problem and then we'll do the derivative of the second part again using the product rule so plus we'll get 24 x squared we'll leave the e to the x squared alone plus now we'll leave the 8x cubed alone again we'll pick up a 2x e to the x squared term alright I hope my computations are okay so let's simplify 12 e to the x squared it looks like we'll get a 24x squared e to the x squared plus another 24x um, squared e to the x squared. Um, and then it looks like our last term is 16. Um, did I lose a sign somewhere? I don't think so. 16x to the fourth e to the x squared. So if we simplify this down, what do we get? It looks like we have a 12 e to the x squared. So 12 e to the x squared. It looks like on the inside we'll get 48 x squared e to the x squared. 
and then it looks like we have a 16x to the fourth e to the x squared. Um, at least that's what I got. Um, so hopefully that's okay. I'm pretty sure it is. I don't think I did anything too crazy. Okay, so again, this is our fourth derivative, and I'm going to rewrite it one more time. Notice there's an e to the x squared in there everywhere, so I can really say that the fourth derivative evaluated, um, the fourth derivative at x, we can factor that out, e to the x squared, and then we would have 12 plus 48 x squared plus 16 x to the fourth, and that's my fourth derivative. Okay, so remember it says basically um, in Simpson's rule, it says we have to bound this fourth derivative. We have to bound that by some value k, and it says our x values are between, um, are, are, it's from the interval we're integrating over. And again, if you looked at the original problem, the interval we were integrating over was from 0 to 1. So my goal is now to think, for this function, e to the x squared times 12 plus 48 x squared plus 16 x to the fourth, I want to figure out what the largest possible value of that could be for any x value between 0 and 1. So this in general could be another difficult question. Um, if the function was more complicated, you might actually have to start using the first derivative test, or um, you'd basically have to figure out the absolute maximum of this function, the closed interval method. You would have to find the absolute value of this function from 0 to 1. But I think in this case, we can just make a, a, an observation here, which is um, basically everything are even powers. So, and everything's positive as well. So to make e to the x squared as large as possible, um, if I'm taking x values between 0 and 1, well, 1 would be the x coordinate that would make e to the x squared as large as possible. Likewise, to make the value we get out from 48x squared as large as possible, I would want to use the x coordinate of 1. And likewise, if I wanted 16x to the fourth to be as large as possible, I would want to use the x coordinate of 1. Okay, so it basically says if we take the fourth derivative and evaluate it at 1, we'll get e to the first times 12 plus 48 plus 16. So what's that? Um, it looks like 76 e is what I'm getting. Okay, <clears throat> so what that means is now we've bounded the fourth derivative on the interval 0 to 1. We always know if we take the fourth derivative and evaluate it at any number between 0 and 1, that's always less than or equal to the number 76 over e. Okay, so that's again the first part of my problem. Again, um, we needed, it says the error bound is less than or equal to k b minus a over 180 into the fourth. <clears throat> but now we know a lot of these values. We figured out, and this should be an absolute value, excuse me. We know that k is 76e. B minus A is the length of the interval. Again, we were integrating from 0 to 1, so the length of the interval will be 1 minus 0. And on the bottom, we have 180 over n to the fourth. <clears throat> so we're getting pretty close at this point. Um, again, you can see pretty tedious little problem. So we wanted the error, which we've now almost got. We wanted to figure out how many n's, how many intervals we needed to use so that the error which in this case is 76e times 1 over 180 times n to the fourth. We wanted that to be less than or equal to the value, it was point, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Well now all we have to do is just solve this inequality. So I could multiply both sides by n to the fourth. So my n to the fourth would move to the right side. And then I'm going to divide by the point 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So on the left side, I would have 76e divided by 180 times point 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And all we would have to do at this point is simply take the fourth root of both sides to solve for n. 
So it says if we take the fourth root of 76e times 180.00001, obviously you could be simplifying this down. It says n has to be greater than or equal to that value. You again can check my arithmetic here, but I got this uh, stuff on the left side to be roughly equal to the number 18.4. So what it says is, it says to, to approximate that integral to the required, the desired um, accuracy, it says n will have to be, the number of intervals we use will have to be greater than or equal to 18.4. But two things to remember, one, we're chopping it up into a whole number of intervals. So the next whole number after 18 is obviously 19, um, so you might be inclined to say you'd have to use 19 intervals, but remember Simpson's rule, you have to use an even number of intervals, so the first even number larger than 18.4 um, clearly is 20, so it says we would have to use at least 20 intervals um, to calculate that integral to the desired accuracy. So um, again, pretty tedious, but nothing hopefully too crazy. I hope uh, this example makes some sense. hope my derivatives weren't too long and messy. And uh, again, as always, if you have questions or comments, feel free to post them. If there's uh, anything I can do to help you, or hopefully somebody else out there reading comments, um, hopefully somebody can point you in the right direction. So all right, um, hope this helps, and good luck out there.